It's been nominated for uh, achievement editing, screenplay, directing for Adam McKay, motion picture, performance by an actor in a leading role, Christian Bale, performance by an actor in a supporting role, Sam Rockwell, uh, actress in supporting role, Amy Adams, and achievement in makeup and hairstyling. Um, you've seen it, obviously. Yes, yes, of course. And so, the, yes, the makeup and hairstyling is. So it stars. Um, uh, <laughs> under it stars Christian Bale under a huge amount of makeup and yeah. hairstyling. I think that's the best way of describing it. Um, when he got his uh, award, his, his Golden Globe, he um, he famously thanked Satan for providing inspiration for the role, which sort of set everybody into a into a sort of flurry of uh, you know of, of Twitter sphere meltdown. He portrays Dick Cheney. Um, and uh, there is definitely in this uh, film a sort of demonic edge to his VP. Who, you know, as you know, is the you know mastermind in war on terror, and uh, you know using the unitary executive theory to basically make a president unassailable with himself essentially as the power behind the throne. So the film itself is a sort of study of his life and how he got to be what he was, beginning with him as a kind of, as a derelict drunk who is told by his wife, you have to get your act together. And then somebody who does get their act together and then becomes this person who is absolutely at the very sort of dark heart of power. Here is a scene with him uh, and Sam Rockwell uh, as George W. I want you to be my VP. You're the solution to my problem. Yeah. Um, CEO of a large company. I have been uh, Secretary of Defense. I have been the Chief of Staff. Uh, the Vice Presidency is mostly a uh, symbolic job. Right, right. I can see how that wouldn't be uh, enticing to you. However, the Vice Presidency is also defined by the President. And if we were to come to a uh, different understanding. Uh-huh. Go on. I'm listening. I sense that uh, you're a kinetic leader. You make decisions based on instinct. I am. Mm. People always said that. Yeah, yeah. Very different. Very different from, uh, from your father in that regard. Now, maybe I can uh, handle some of the more mundane jobs overseeing uh, bureaucracy, managing military, uh, energy, uh, foreign policy. That sounds good. You can, it's funny, when you hear, when you hear him doing the, I can't do his voice, when you hear him doing the voice, and you can almost see the lips and the, you know, the, the face that he pulls when he's doing that, the kind of, you know, the teeth and the lips making you were doing the same thing you and well, he's, it's because you were pulling strange faces but because it's there is something about just hearing that voice which almost makes you start doing the face that christian bale does all the way through the film it's also a performance that was somebody was talking about this just recently about the idea of the academy award-winning pause um the uh, you know the start saying something with a pause in an unexpected place and which immediately draws uh, awards attention. It is it is a very good performance, and it is very good uh, makeup and hair. I have to say, I'm slightly baffled by the level of lavish praise that has been heaped on Vice. Um, when uh, Adam McKay made Adam McKay made um, the Big Short, I had certain reservations about the Big Short, but the Big Short I enjoyed because firstly it was funny, and secondly because in its sort of exploration of how it was that uh, these uh, these financial dealings had essentially caused this catastrophic crash. The film was told in a very sort of flippant manner, but also in a flippant manner that, like somebody doing a card trick whilst explaining to you how the card trick was being done, was both entertaining and, oh, oh that's interesting. And I definitely came out of the big short understanding some things that I hadn't understood before. I know that now some people say, well, actually, you know, yes, it's much more complicated than that. But if, but actually one of the things... It was still pretty complicated. It was still pretty complicated, but one of the things that the movie did was, was, was to make understandable a certain amount of that complicated stuff. And it did it through sort of, you know, fourth wall breaking devices about, you know, here's somebody famous in a bath to explain this, here's a chef to explain that. And... But it, but it worked. In the case of this, it 
the film kind of admits at the beginning that little is known really about its central character and that therefore there is, there's got to be a huge amount of conjecture. And, and the, the central character, I think, still by the end of the film, despite a similar sort of barrage of stylistic ticks of, you know, fourth wall breaks, a moment when um, two central characters break into Shakespearean dialogue in a moment of inarticulacy, a moment when halfway through the film there's this joke about suddenly the end of the film, there's an alternative ending to the film, what if somebody had done this and what if their life had gone that way instead? And so while I thought it was kind of individually, there were things in it that I that I liked, the performances in it that I liked and some that I liked more than others. What it didn't have was that overall sweep, that sucker punch, that comedic satirical thing that made you go, I've got it. I I absolutely have got it. And in a way, the film kind of admits its own failing in that at the beginning because it sort of suggests that, it, that, it, that it's not really possible to get under the skin of the central character. And the problem with that is that it ends up sometimes, particularly, I have to say, in the in the sort of final act of the movie, looking less like a, like a clever satirical um, undoing and more like something which is polemics trying to find the right mode of discussion. I mean, it's, it's, it, is a, it is a more complicated story to tell. And for me, I ended up, I thought it was, it was, a, it was less satisfyingly told. And I, I don't think I'm alone in this. I have, sp I have spoken to some other people who have said, who shared that reservation that yes, there are things in it that are good. And yes, there are, there are individual performances that are good. And there's no question that Christian Bale, I mean, you know, whenever Christian Bale does any role, he sinks himself right in. When was the last time you saw Christian Bale doing a role that seemed half-hearted? You know, he doesn't look like somebody who takes things on lightly, does no, he? Not you know, really. you can imagine that's what he's going to. You know, Nicole Kidman said that thing about when she was in character on the set of Destroyer that she didn't snap out of character because she felt that she would be playing it. And there is, you definitely get the sense of somebody inhabiting a role. But I don't know that the film did what The Big Short did of revealing the underlying workings of some, you know, great dark thing that was happening and understanding how it was happening and making it sly and funny and accessible at the same time. So, you know, I'm, I'm slightly baffled by the, by the huge amount of praise being heaped on it. Even for all the things that are right about it, I think as a film itself, it is, it's, in, it's entertaining up to a point, but it's flawed. And what it doesn't have is that through narrative sucker punch, killer blow, you know, I'm all out of cliches, um, you know, line that runs, I mean, it, despite things like this ongoing fishing analogy, it never actually manages to land the big fish. That's as close as I can get to okay. wrapping that up 